Good morning, Mount Kenya. And as we prepare to go into our morning worship, we want you to take a look at our morning announcements. Join us at noonday and 6 p.m. each Wednesday for our Bible study. Our series of lessons are called Solid as a Rock, a study of the life and writings of the Apostle Peter. All high school and college graduates are asked to send your contact information to edwards.marcus at gmail.com. For high school, please include a picture of your cap and gown, the high school you are graduating from, and your plans after graduation. For college and universities, please include a picture of your cap and gown, the name of the college and university you are graduating from, and your major. The Mount Canaan Baptist Church Youth Ministry, along with Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and the City of Shreveport presents Money Talks, a youth financial literacy seminar. This event will be held on Saturday, April 20th in the Norma J. Blake Community Center at 3 p.m. and is open to all youth ages 12 to 17. Please bring them out for this very important event. The Men's Ministry Cleanup Day will be April 20th at 9.30 a.m. For more information, contact Brother Corey Booker at 318-677-9150. Our Sunday School Lessons this quarter focus on the Messages of Christ. Join us for Sunday School each Sunday at 9 a.m. Make plans to attend the Usher Ministry installation. It will be May 1st at 6 p.m. Save the date for our Spring Revival, May 7th through the 9th at 7 o'clock nightly. Our guest speaker will be none other than Pastor Tellis Chapman. We're getting ready for an extraordinary Women's Day celebration. Save the date, May 12th. These are your announcements. Go out and have a great week. Good morning. Our scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians 10 and 17. For we being many are one bread and one body, for all are, we, are all are, we are all partakers of that one bread. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God our Father, we thank you once again, Lord. You have allowed us to see another day. And Lord, that we are truly grateful, Lord. And Father, as we come here assembled to give you all the praise and honor, Lord, Lord, we pray your Holy Spirit work in this place and through us, and that the songs that are sung and the message that is being preached, Lord, it will touch someone's heart, Lord. Lord, we are praying that as it touch our hearts, Lord, that, Lord, it would move within us, that we will be better than we were before before or even better than we were this morning lord father we pray that as we have gone about this day lord that we had done those things that are pleasing in your sight lord and lord we pray that others see you through us and everything that we say and do lord and father as we as part of our service today lord as we remember you and the sacrifice that was done lord Lord, we pray that as we take partake in that blood and as we take partake in the symbolic of your body, Lord, that we will always remember all the things that you've done for us, all the things that you will do for us, Lord. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, for it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
we vow never to forget what he's done for us. We vow to remember the cross in our day-to-day -day lives. Jesus, I won't forget.
Savior is living in this world today. And I know that he is living, no matter what men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. Savior is living in this world today And I know that he is living No matter what men may say I see his hand of mercy I hear his voice of cheer You ask me how I know he lives Living in this world today And I know that he is living No matter what men may say I see his hand of mercy I hear his voice of cheer You are
because as long as he lives, I can face what? Because he lives, all of my fears are what? Because I know who does what? Hold my future. All because that man lives.
Come on, if you know he lives, jump to your feet and give God glory. Give him a living praise for a living Satan. Give him a living praise for a living Satan. Yeah, yeah. Come on, why don't you? I'm gonna give you your preaching license for about 10 seconds. Grab somebody by the hand and say, He died, He was buried, but He lived. He lives. Yeah. God, we thank you now. Um, I don't even know how to thank you for it, but I thank you that you live. Thank you that we got the right one. Thank you that we got the right one. We serve a living Savior who is in the world today. 
Now we ask that you would speak from out of yourself through me to us a living word. Speak your word to us today. That we might be more like Jesus on tomorrow than we were on yesterday. In Jesus name. Amen. Matthew 4. Matthew 4 and Mark chapter 1 will record the same instance incident Matthew 4 verse 18 through 22 reads almost the same as Mark chapter 1 verse 16 through 20 so let's start in Matthew 4 verse 18 now as Jesus was walking by the sea of Galilee he saw two brothers Simon who was called Peter and Andrew his brother they were casting a net into the sea. They were casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. That's why they were casting nets into the sea. They were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending, they were mending their nets. The others were casting, but these were mending. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Go to Mark chapter 1 real quick. Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 16, same incident is recorded by Mark, but there's something Mark adds. And he was going along by the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants. And they went away to follow him. You may be seated. You may be seated. In this series of sermons and Bible study lessons, sermons coming from the Gospels, Bible studies coming from the epistles of Peter about Peter, a sermon that we have entitled Solid as a Rock, that Peter, Jesus says, will start out like sand, but by the time the Lord gets through with him, he's going to be solid as a rock. And I'm preaching that to you so that you will be encouraged if you are like Peter to hang in there. Because if you stay with the Lord, you'll end up being solid as a rock. I don't want you to be discouraged because it looks like somebody that you see out the corner of your eyes um, on Sunday, and they look like they got it all together. I want you to know they do have it all together now. But they have not always been like they are now. They are solid as a rock now. But there was one time that they were shifty as sand. So I want to encourage you to hang on in there. But I also want those of you who are 
more mature to be patient with those who are immature. Uh, you are a disciple maker and you need to understand that nobody becomes solid as a rock overnight. So I want you to learn to be patient with some people who are like Peter in your life and they, ain't, they don't get it as fast. Now you need to be praying for wisdom and I want to say this because there are some people you need to put on your wave list for good. And you need wisdom to know who has potential to be something or somebody um, and, and who is, uh, uh, who, who, who even if you wait for them, they still ain't coming. So I, I brought you here today to this next episode in the life of Peter last Sunday. And uh, to be honest with you, I've always, when I read Matthew and I read this incident, Matthew and Mark, I always thought that Jesus meets some guys that didn't know him and he calls them um, to be his followers. But I'm going to show you in a minute that that's not necessarily so. Peter answers the call in Matthew and Mark. He answers the call after having met Jesus before in the gospel according to St. John chapter 1. And I remind you again because I love to pick um, and, and, and I want to find your nerve again, the one that I hit last Sunday, and I want to step on it a little bit uh, because Peter is saved and he meets Jesus not because of the hermeneutical or homiletical prowess of John the Baptist. In other words, he gets saved not because John the Baptist can preach, but because Andrew, who is a member of the church that John the Baptist pastors, is living it. Peter doesn't get saved because John can preach. Peter meets Jesus because Andrew, the member, can live. Because some Peters aren't impressed with the preacher. But they are more impressed with the life of the person that's sitting in the pew that they know by name. Andrew, the Bible says, is concerned about his own brother Peter. And he goes and gets Peter and says, come, I found Jesus. And then today we're going to find out that not only is Andrew Peter's brother, he's his co-worker. They work together. And brothers and sisters today, Peter answers the call to assignment. There are several calls that you will experience. Number one is a call to life. It's a call to life. It's a call to life. That's why uh, your mama didn't have an abortion. You ain't have nothing to do with that call. Your mama and your dad at some time in the past got together. Might have been for one night. They might not even be together no more. But they got together for that one night. Hallelujah. You're here. I had a relative of mine to share that her mama told her that if she didn't need some money that night, she wouldn't be here. To which I told her, go tell your mama that you thank God she needed some money. I don't know how you got here, but you're here. <laughs> That's a call to life, but then there's a call to salvation. Once you're alive, you understand you can't make it by yourself. So the Lord says, come unto me all ye who are uh, labor, who, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest so that's a call to salvation but then there's a call to service a specific ability that you have that God has given you we call it a gift God has given you a gift and he's given you as a gift to us everybody who is saved 
has a distinct ability. You can do something that can't nobody else in this room do it like you can do it. And when you do what you do, all of us are blessed because you do what you do. God has given you a gift, but he's also given you to us as a gift. That's the third call. I'm going to talk about that today. And then there's a call of sacrifice. There's a call of sacrifice. After the Lord calls you into service, then he's going to call, call you also to sacrifice. You're going to have to put something down. In order to be used by the Lord, you're going to have to let something go. And that something ain't always a sin. It's not always a sin. It's just a sin to you. Because you can't serve as long as you got it. And it wasn't a sin for you to have it. It's just a problem for you to have it and serve like you need to serve. That's why Hebrew says lay aside every weight and the sin. Because some stuff ain't sin but it is a weight. Are y'all here with me? And then there's a call. There's another call that you're going to get. I don't care how healthy you are. I don't care what color you are. I don't care how much money you got. There's another call you're going to get. And that's a call to death. They used to sing down the country where I'm from. When he called me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Then they will go on. And I'll be somewhere listening. You're going you to get that call. Try to be healthy and eat as many salads as you can, yeah, and drink some water, drink you some water, but sooner or later, with your salad eating, exercising, water drinking self, you won't get that call. And then, y'all, there's another call, there's a call to judgment. Now, depends on how you handle the second call, is going to determine what call you get for the call of judgment. Say judgment. Because for those who have not answered that second call, which is a call to salvation, they are going to stand before what's called the white throne judgment, where the Lord is going to let them argue their case before he sent them to hell. He's going to let them argue their case, but he's going to send them to hell anyway. But now, if you and I have answered that second call, we will be before what the Bible teaches is the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, where we will be judged, but it's not going to be whether or not I go to heaven or hell. It's the judgment to determine what my reward is going to be. And the reason it's not going to determine whether I go to heaven or hell, because that second call was a judgment that took place out of court. Jesus handled that out on a hill called Calvary. That case was handled out of court. So it was the second call where I was deemed to go to hell. But Jesus says, if you know you're guilty, I paid it all. And I want to talk today, brothers and sisters, about the third call, the call to service. I always thought that this was the first time that Jesus met James and John and Peter and Andrew, Peter and Andrew, James and John. But this is not the first time he met them. Remember last week I told you he's already met them in John chapter 1. They believe, theologians believe, that these men have been acquainted with Jesus for at least John chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4 of John before Jesus gives them this third call. So Jesus changes water to wine in chapter 2 of John. These men haven't had this call yet. Jesus meets Nicodemus in chapter 4. These men haven't had that call yet. In, in chapter 3, I'm sorry, he meets Nicodemus. Chapter 4, he meets the woman at the well. And these men have not yet had this call yet. This is a call to service. This is a call to assignment. This is a call to giftings. This is a call to destiny. This is a call where Jesus is telling 
Peter, this is the reason that I saved you. This is the reason that you've been born again so that now you know what to do. So you're not just living life as a benefit of Calvary and, and, and not a casualty of Calvary, but you have spiritual purpose in your life. It's that third call when you understand this is why I'm saved. This is what I'm here for. This is what God has called me to do. I am as sure about what God has called me to do, Reb, as you are up there in that pulpit. And I'm not in a pulpit, but I have service to the body of Christ. I know what I'm supposed to do. This is that third call. But let me help you. Jesus meets them in John 1 and he spends time with them for a while. They become his students. He is their rabbi. He is their teacher. They are acquainted with him. If you're going to get this call, you need to be acquainted with him. And, and, and Jesus in chapter Matthew chapter 4 and Mark chapter 1, he uses the word follow me. He passes by and says, follow me, follow me. I looked that word up, y'all. I find it's interesting. That word in the Greek, follow, is the word dute. Dute. It's the word dute. So I decided I was going to call this sermon a call to duty. This is a call to duty. This is a call for an assignment. This is a call where he tells them what they are called to do, why they are here, even why they've survived so much stuff that they've been through. This is their duty. But you can't get this call if you haven't been acquainted. Jesus has taught them as a rabbi for some time now. And now he leaves from school and stops by their job. And it's on their job where he gives them this assignment. Are y'all here with me? Brothers and sisters, we, I hear y'all all the time talking about you've heard the messages and the Sunday school lessons. You've read the book Purpose Driven Life. This church went through that book. You've read uh, Romans chapter 12 about all of the different gifts and callings. You've read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 13 about the gifts, the spiritual gifts. You've read Ephesians chapter 4 about all of the gifts. You've read 1 Peter about all of the gifts. You, you know about about the gifts and you're wondering well what's my gift how do I find my gift I'm glad you came to church today listen to me very carefully don't go to sleep now the Bible says that they get their third call and they understand what their assignment is after they have been acquainted with the Lord for some time Peter might say to us you ain't gonna never find out what you're called to do if you don't spend some time with Jesus if you don't spend some time beyond Sunday service. Now, I, I'm, I'm so glad y'all here today. I ain't lying. I'm glad you came to church today. But what I'm trying to tell you, if you're going to understand what the Lord has called you to do, you're going to have to do more than this. Yeah. You're going to have to show up on Wednesdays at Bible study and prayer meeting. You're going to have to come a little early on Sunday so you can get yourself in somebody's Sunday school class. You're going to have to go back on the internet, Facebook, YouTube or something and listen to these sermons over and over again with a notebook and a pad and paper. And then so you can listen, you got to take this thing to a whole nother level. Matter of fact, when Jesus says, follow me, this is not a new phenomenon, a Every Jewish male at an early age would sit under a rabbi. They would hear the, te the teachings of the Old Testament, the Torah, the Pentateuch. They would hear the, old, the teachings of the Old Testament. And the rabbi would be teaching, but he would be noticing that some of them were taking in the information at a faster pace than others. And those would be the ones he would notify their parents and say, listen, I want this person to follow me because they have an aptitude of grasping stuff a little better than others others I want them to become a permanent student of mine 
So when Jesus passes by this boat, he's saying to Peter and James and John, listen, y'all have already been acquainted with me and I noticed that you got an extra hunger on the inside of you a little bit more than the average student. He says, so I want you to come and learn more since you want more. Y'all remember, even sometimes in the gospel, Jesus would teach. He gives the parable of the soul who goes out and sows seed. He gives that to everybody. He gives that to everybody. But then the Bible says when they get back in uh, to a private setting, Peter and them say, now Jesus, we heard what you said. But we don't know what you're talking about. And the Bible says Jesus in private in Sunday school would explain to them in depth more than what he preached in public. One time Peter, James, and John went with Jesus up on the mountain and the Bible says Jesus was transfigured, changed inside out. When they came down off the mountain, the other disciples were down there dealing with a man who was demon, whose son was demon possessed. And they, the man said, listen, I done brought them to your disciples, but they can't do nothing about it. Jesus says to the demon, come out. And he came out. And then when they got in private again, Peter them asked him, now Jesus, how come that didn't work for us? And in private, Jesus says, this kind cometh out but by nothing but fasting and praying. They had a hunger for more. And Jesus says, since you have a hunger for more, I'm going to fill it. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness because if you keep asking for more, I'm going to keep giving you more. But they had to do more than just show up on Sundays. Let the church say, be acquainted with him. Yeah, you can't just join church and then get in the choir and the next Sunday. You don't know what you're singing about. I wish I had some help in here. See, people join church and we automatically put them on the deacon board because they, they can wear a black suit well. No, you need to know the Lord. I wish I had some help in here. You don't just automatically get put in the pulpit up here preaching and don't know what you're preaching about. You need to know the Lord. Tell somebody to get acquainted. Hey, y'all, you need to get acquainted because this other word, follow. You know what else follow means? Follow means come be my apprentice because you are eventually going to be my replacement. Come study under me so you can do what I did. Now, I thought about how I could find a good example of this. And I thought about the movie, the first episode of Men in Black. Well, Tommy Lee Jones, Agent K, is, is, reaches out into the NYPD and get Will Smith, Agent J, and they go through episodes of Men in Black at the end of the movie. K sits there and they sit on a bench and Agent J says something like, you know, I want to be, uh, we, we, we're going to make good partners. And Agent K looks at him and says at the end of the movie, I was not training a partner, I was training a replacement. Because I'm getting ready to go. And Jesus gets Peter and them and says, listen, I ain't training no partners. I'm training replacements. Because I'm getting ready to go back to my father and operate in the mediatorial office of the, the one who is going to make the atonement. I'm getting ready to go back to heaven as a cancel check. So every time you sin and the devil tries to say we need to pay, the father can look at Jesus as a cancel check and say it's already been paid. And Jesus says while I'm in heaven, you're going to be down here on earth and greater work shall you do because I'm going to the father. I ain't training partners, I'm training replacement. And before you find out what the Lord wants you to do, you need to be acquainted with him. You need to know the difference between the Garden of Gethsemane and the Garden of Eden. You need to know that Moses was not one of Jesus' disciples. You need to know that the Saul in the New Testament is not the same as the Saul in the Old Testament. I heard somebody the other day preaching with enthusiasm. Boy, they were preaching with enthusiasm. They were going at it, preaching about Saul. And they said, listen, Saul in the New Testament, they said, Saul, you know, he was king before he became an apostle. 
and I rewind it, what the hell she just said? <laughs> that ain't the same song. And you ain't going to know that if you ain't been to Sunday school. Say acquainted. If you're going to get your call of duty, you're going to have to be acquainted. Here's the next one. If you're going to get your call of duty, you're going to have to be active. The Bible says as Jesus passed by, he goes to the job of Peter and Andrew, James and John. Check this out. The Bible says when he get there, Peter and Andrew are casting their nets. When he gets there, James and John are mending their nets. I-N-G, which suggests they doing something. Maybe the reason you don't know what you're called to do is because you haven't been acquainted. But secondly, you ain't active at nothing. Nothing. You ain't faithful at nothing. Nothing. Let me tell y'all young folks something who are, let me just throw this off, throw this at you while I'm cooking the gumbo. If you 20, 30 years old, Get somewhere and get to work. Quit changing jobs. Quit changing majors. You do not want to be 50 or 60 still trying to find out what you're going to do. And this is in the secular world. You should be thinking about what else you're going to do after you retire at 50. But get somewhere and go to work every day and stay there. Well, them people don't like me. Stay there. Yeah. Do they write a check with your name on it? Does it cash? Yeah. I don't care if they don't like you, don't want you. Stay there. Yeah. Oh, Wilson, Wilson. I, I call his name all the time. He's my usher at, um, at Truvine who, whose daddy told me, he told me that his daddy named him Wilson Wilson because white folk in those days didn't want to call black men by their last name. Wilson ought to be about 80 years old. He said, so his daddy named him Wilson Wilson so that when they call his first name, they'd be calling his last name. <laughs> Retired from the military, started teaching and became principal at Carroll and uh, retired that wonderful brilliant brother he said to me one day he said pastor you know the Lord never is not recorded in the gospels that Jesus ever called anybody that was doing nothing they were already busy when he called them and if you can't be trusted in the secular who gonna trust you with spiritual Jesus says that if you can't be trusted in unrighteous mammon, if you can't be trusted with secular stuff, who's going to trust you the great riches? You ain't even showing up at work on time. And when you get there, you don't work hard. You're waiting on your next break. Come on, talk back to me if you can. Dr. Samuel Joe Ratliff says that he believes, and I'm starting to believe it too, that people are consistent. And the reason they ain't faithful at church, they ain't faithful nowhere. They don't have any stick to anywhere. You can't be trusted with nothing. Which also says to me, come here, we can argue about this over a cup of coffee later. That I would even rather you be faithful at the wrong thing than to be unfaithful at the right thing. I'd rather have somebody who was a full-time sinner and now they're saved instead of having somebody that's unfaithful as a saint. Somebody said, you ain't stopped dancing, you just changed partners. Just as much as you used to dance, you still dance, you just changed the music. I wish I had some hip in here. It used to be the OJs, but now it's old Jesus. 
It used to be prince, but now it's the prince of peace. The Lord said in Revelations, if you are a part-time saint, you make me sick. I'd rather you be hot or cold than to be lukewarm. Are you active when he called Moses? Moses was active as being a shepherd. When he called Gideon, Gideon was active threshing wheat in a wine press. When he called David, David was active as a shepherd. Who was it? Amos says, I was plowing my daddy's field when the Lord called me. Peter and John were casting nets and mending nets. Matthew was at the receipt of customs as a tax collector. Paul was on his way to Damascus to persecute the church. He was full time at Rome. Because if the Lord can get you as faithful to him, yeah. preach. Yeah. Boy, if we could get some of them drug dealers in here and get them to be as faithful, trusting in the Lord and peddling Jesus as they are peddling drugs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know now. I don't know. I thank God for the brethren we got, but I wish I had some thug deacons. Some ex-thug deacons. We wouldn't have to have no security guard. We got another security guard out there. Hallelujah. But if we had some thug deacons that the Lord done saved, we ain't got to worry about nobody coming in here. They going to see your car. No, no, nah, not that church. We ain't finna go in that mess around. That church going to... I remember that car right there. He ain't always been saved. He, he ain't always had a Bible in his hand. He used to have something else in his hand. He wasn't always a Bible total. I wish I had some help in here. Be active. Let the church say be active. You, you need to be faithful at something notice now listen come here i couldn't wait to get here to tell you this notice in matthew and in mark look what it says jesus stopped by and they were casting nets for they were fishermen jesus says follow me and i will make you a fisherman of men wait a minute they were fishermen and Jesus says follow me I'm going to make you fishermen of men I got to say it one more time because I just love to preach it he says they were fishermen and Jesus says follow me and I'm going to make you a fisherman of men I'm not going to change what you are an expert at I'm just going to change your object your objective You're 16 years old and you're running an entire drug incorporation. You, you ain't even selling the weed. By now, at 16, you got somebody selling the weed for you. You got somebody picking it up. They sell it, bring you the money. You at 16 operating a corporation. You know the chemical composition to turn cocaine into crack. You can take that in there, put it on the stove, know just how to measure it and slice it up and sell it at 16. And then he gets saved and get in church and we make him sit there and watch everybody else. You've been throwing parties for years, getting to everybody. It's people at the party you don't even know. The whole thing operates. You know how to get the food. You know how to get the, the music right. You know how to get all the drench. You know how to get the venue and everything. Get saved and sit in church talking about, well, I don't know what to do. Why, we need somebody to chair the church anniversary. We need somebody, help me here, to chair the pastor's anniversary. And you're sitting there with all of these gifts. You're an accountant. You work for Chase. You work for Bank One. You work for a bank. You count money every day, all day. That woman at that 
tell her she can sit there and count thousands of dollars because I've seen her, I've watched them do it for some other folks, count thousands of dollars in about six minutes and then in most of our churches around the country it takes the people in the finance room at least two hours to count $200. Ask me how I know because in so many churches they never come out to worship because they still back there counting $200. I said most churches, I ain't say Mount Canaan. I'm not changing what you're an expert at. I'm just changing your objective. Touch my tell them be active. Don't be lazy. Be active. Oh, but y'all ain't like none of them. You ain't gonna like this last one. If you're going to get your call of duty, you need to be acquainted with him. If you're going to get your call of duty, uh, you need to be active. Then the Bible said that Jesus walked up to these cats and says, follow me. And here's the word. I have it underlined in the hard copy at my house immediately. Some of them were casting nets. Others were mending nets. And the Bible says when Jesus says, follow me, immediately. They dropped everything. Peter and them were casting nets and they saw it as an opportunity to go deeper in their relationship with the Lord on their way to replacing the work that he was doing on earth. And the Bible says they dropped their nets. goes to James and John who are mending their nets says to them follow me and they dropped it because if you're going to get your call to duty you need to be ready to sacrifice you need to be ready to abandon something did you hear me now y'all come here and pay close attention because I hinted to this earlier. It's not a sin to have a net. They just can't serve and follow him with the nets. And if you're going to go to this next level, I don't know what it is. You talk to God about it. But you're going to have to leave something. Something can't go. And sometimes it's people. Oh God. The text says... They left nets. They left the boat. And they left Zebedee. And these are not broke men. These are men who are well to do. These are business owners. Ask me how I know. Because Mark says they left servants. These are entrepreneurs. But in order to follow Jesus, they had to leave something. They left everything. Am I telling you you need to leave your business? No. But I'm saying you're going to leave something. They left everything. 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 Let me take some time and look at y'all when I ask this question. Before I go any further, let me wipe these glasses off. 
son, see you. I want to look at you straight in your face. Now, I got to ask you something. They left everything to follow the Lord. Have you left anything to follow the Lord? Have you let go of something that you could have held on to? Because there's a whole lot of us talking about we didn't let go of some stuff, but it's because we couldn't hold it anyway. I don't chase women anymore because you can't do nothing with them when you catch them. Now, I don't be answering my phone all the time. Ain't nobody calling you. Come on, y'all talk back to me. Let's, let's be real. I've been celibate for five years, girl. You ain't got no choice. Ain't nobody even asking to hold your hand. No wonder. Have you given up anything to follow the Lord? The Bible says they abandoned everything immediately and followed him. Have you had a choice to go somewhere else? There are some people in this room who can testify that they've had a choice. And they followed the Lord. <laughs> and, and when they look back over their lives, they'll testify one of the greatest decisions that they ever made. Can I get a witness in here? Y'all, let, let me pull up something from my own file. I, I, was, uh, I won a talent show, Natchez, Mississippi, that was put on by Omegas and Deltas. And if you win the talent show, um, you got a chance to go to the Apollo in New York City. And uh, I won that talent show. I was supposed to go to the Apollo and sing in New York City. I was supposed to leave a Thursday morning and record that, that at the Apollo, that, that instance, either that Friday, I think, or Saturday. My dad had been sick in the bed for three weeks, had not gotten out of the bed. The night before I got ready to go to the Apollo, Daddy walked down the hall to my room with tears in his eyes, had not gotten out of the bed, had not walked in three weeks and said to me that the Lord told him to tell me about preaching and that the Lord would raise him up and he could walk out of that bed. Listen, he came down and told me, son, the Lord told me not to let you go to the Apollo. That was one the first time I ever argued with my daddy. I said to him, your room is right down the hall from my room. If the Lord wanted me to preach, I had already been notified by the Lord that I was a preacher. I didn't start preaching until I was 21 because I was rebelling against my daddy. I didn't want to preach because I didn't want to do what my dad and everybody else thought I was going to do that the Lord had already told me I was going to do. Because I know I would have done pretty well if I went to the Apollo. I know I at least won one time. Somebody would have heard me and signed me. When I look back on it, man, I'd be dead by now. Because you're going to give me millions with the habits that I had. I thought about it this morning, boy, I would have ended up with a bed, a mattress stuffed with something. And I would have been on top of it. <laughs> I 
I ain't never done this before, but if I would have made them millions, I would have tried. I had white stuff on my nose. With about six or seven women from different countries, I ain't even know that name. Probably couldn't even, just dead. If you would have had some millions, you would have been somewhere too with something. Thank you, dead. But you don't know the joy. 95% of the time of walking through that door, walking around there, and getting up here telling you about Jesus. I'd rather do this every Sunday and every Wednesday than to sing to millions every week. I am where I believe God wanted me to be and I ain't regretting answering my call. I ain't regretting the Lord calling me to preach. I'm thankful. Sometimes the road gets rough. And sometimes the going gets tough. And sometimes the hills get hard to climb. But I started out long time ago and there is no doubt in my mind Lord I thank you for my call of duty sometimes up sometimes down sometimes I miss it sometimes I hit it but when they ask me preachers you know we talk every time hey, every Sunday evening and Monday morning man how'd it go yesterday I always answer the same thing brother Butler man I gave it my best swing I went out swinging. I, I died swinging. I was trying to preach. They wasn't saying nothing, but I was up there trying. And uh, sometimes, you know, I think, well, Lord, maybe you didn't call me, but next Sunday, y'all do a little better about responding. I'm, I'm ready to get up there and try again. I thank God for where I am. I'm just trying to tell you, if you get acquainted with him, if you get active and be faithful wherever you are, and if you learn to abandon some stuff, you'll get to the point where you'll never ever regret putting down what you put down in order to pick up what you picked up. And you'll end up saying, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. Some of y'all senior saints ought to help me right long in here. But there'll be no turning back. I have decided to make Jesus my choice. And I'm going to stay with the Lord. Touch my and tell him I'm going to stay with the Lord. And I've got to put some stuff down, I'll put it down. If I gotta let some people go, I'll let people go. If I gotta let some stuff go, I'll let some stuff go. Cause I don't feel no ways tired. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me now. Can you help me close this message? I need somebody that's been following the Lord. I need somebody who's made the sacrifice before. I need somebody who's let some stuff go. I need you to help me witness to somebody that needs to let something go. I need you to help me to witness to somebody that's struggling with it right now. Turn and shake somebody's hand and tell them these words. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor, I am a follower of Jesus. I let some stuff go, but tell them, neighbor, when I look back, over my life thank you Lord to where I came from thank you Lord uh, for what you brought me through thank you Lord uh, for where I am now for 
where I am now. Lord, I thank you. Come on, stand to your feet. Go ahead and just whisper to somebody here. Tell them I ain't turning back now. That person ain't feeling you. Touch somebody else. Tell them I ain't turning back now. Ah, I ain't turning back now. I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for calling us. Call to life. Call to salvation. Call to service. Ah, God. A call to sacrifice. Give us the wisdom to know what we need to put down. Pray with me. Give me the wisdom to know what to leave, when to leave it. Lift your hands and say this one. And who to leave. Everything is not a sin. But some things I still need to leave. Hallelujah, Lord. Say this, say this. Everybody is not a devil. But somebody I still need to leave. Give me the wisdom. And then give me the strength. To let go. Look at me. Let me interrupt your prayers. We're going to pray again. Listen to me. Strength is not always. Brother Esther's. How much you can pick up. Sometimes strength is defined. By what you can let go. Let's go back into prayer. Lord, give me strength to let go. Lord, give me strength to let go. Hold your hand out in front of you like you're holding something. And be honest, Lord, give me strength to let go. Don't let it go yet because you got to be honest. It's hard to let go. I don't know who I'm praying with in here today, but Lord, give me strength to let go. I'm going into a new season. A new level, a new dimension, but some things and some people can't go. Give me strength to let go. Yeah. 
Now on the count of three, open up your hands and let it go. Lord, I'm letting it go. I'm letting them go. It wasn't a sin for me to have, but it was a stumbling block. They ain't devils, but they just can't go with me to the next level. Now give him praise since your hands are open. Doors of the church are open now. We extend to you the second call. That's a call to salvation. Since you were born, since your mama didn't have an abortion, since you're here, you need a savior. And we recommend Jesus. We recommend Jesus. He is our savior. He's our savior. He's the only guarantee that you'll have life and life more abundantly. If you're in this place today and you don't have a savior, we recommend Jesus. Come on. In my mind, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Christians, will y'all bow your heads and pray right now? Because you know how hard it was for you to make that decision. Don't you be no hypocrite. It was so hard for you to pick up the phone on that second call. Call to salvation. What must I do to be saved? Pick up the phone. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling you. I decided May Jesus pick up the phone he's calling right now there is a, a receiver right there in your heart pick up the phone Jesus come into my heart he's calling because he can fix a broken heart he's calling because he can ease a troubled mind A long time ago There is no doubt In my mind I've decided To make Jesus My choice yeah. And the healer. Secondly, there's another call. You've been born again, you've been saved. But let me tell you, you need to be planted into some productive soil. Mount Canaan is your soil. We might not be the perfect place for everybody, but we just might be the soil for you. You need to be a part of a good fellowship. Just like you need to leave some folk, you also need to join some folk. You need to connect with some folk. So we welcome you to Mount Canaan. The Lord is working on us. We still up sometimes, still down sometimes, but now we're more up than down. Every day more and more we're getting more right than wrong. Can I get a witness? And our testimony after our salvation is longer and stronger than our testimony of sin before our salvation. Because the Lord is working on us. So we, we welcome you. And then lastly, there might be somebody that says, Pastor, I'm in a backslidden state. I'm saved. But I, I, I'm, I've walked away from the fellowship. I've stopped reading my word like I used to. I stopped praying like I used to. 
but I want to come back today and make a new start. Listen, one of the benefits of being a Christian is that you can make a return trip. The Bible teaches that God is married to the backslider. Slide on back in. There's some people who are in here now. They just got back in before you did. They just came in a few minutes ago. So you can come on back. You can come on back. Listen to this last one. Pastor, I heard your word today. And according to your word, I'll never find out what God has called me to do if I don't make a commitment to spend some more time with him. And I want to stand today because I want to spend more time with the Lord and I'm going to need some prayer and some support. I want to draw closer to him. If that's you, stand to your feet. Don't wait on the person beside you or in front of you. You stand. I want to be closer. I want you to pray for me. Pray with me because I need to be more committed. I need to do something. God is going to do his part, but I need to do my part. The road is rough. Going against tough Heels are Hard to climb But I started out Long time ago There is no doubt In my mind I decided to make Jesus my choice. Come on, y'all. We got some standing. Can we pray for them right now? Lord, they want to be closer to you. Come on. I told them to stand. You ain't got to come up. Just stand right where you are. Lord, they want to be closer to you. They want to know you more. And we pray for their strength. We pray that they will be hungrier. Because you said that if we're hungry, we'll get filled. Thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. There is no doubt In my mind I decide To make Jesus My choice Yeah, yeah My choice my choice mm, I made it my choice mm, I made it my choice yeah. Yeah. I made it my choice I weighed the options I made him my choice Yeah, 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 yeah. I made him my choice Y'all got to excuse me Sometimes I get a little happy Yeah, made him my choice Made him my choice Discover can't nobody hold me like him. Can't nobody mold me like him. Can't nobody keep me like him. Can't nobody rock me like him. Ever since I made it my choice. Yeah, I made it my choice. Yeah. When I weighed the option I've seen some great people When I weighed the options I've seen some great things When I weighed the option I've had some great things Woo! But nobody 
Broken body and shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you don't have a communion packet, wave your hand, we'll get one to you. We like to take out at least one Sunday in the month in which we refer to it as Bloody Sunday. Where we focus on the blood. Jesus could have just died and satisfied our pardon. We have some hands right here, Brother Deacons. But he didn't just die, he suffered. He suffered and bled and died. At last and did my savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he devote such a sacred head for such a worm as I brother deacons and sister deaconess and ministers and your wives will you come and stand I want them they've heard the preaching and we've praised together we've prayed together but I also want them to see some pictures of some people who will testify if it were not for the blood ministers and ministers wives you come you can see them because they are living testimonies of the message today What is a deacon among many things? He should be a picture of the sermon. Among many things, he should be a picture of the sermon. If you want to see somebody that's concerned about being acquainted with the Lord, you ought to be able to look at the deacons. If you want to see somebody that's active, you should be able to look at the deacons and see that. If you want to see somebody that's abandoned and made a sacrifice, abandoned some things and some people, you ought to look at the deacons and see a picture in the sermon. That's why I want them to stand in front of you. And then rarely do we see husbands and wives in front of us at any time anywhere like you're going to see today men and women a picture of the foundation of the family I want y'all to see that I want you to know it's possible it's probable 
So now I deliver unto you that which also was delivered unto me that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you in the same manner he took the cup saying this cup is the new testament in my blood as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do show the Lord's death until he comes and even now Come Lord Jesus. We have fellowship and relationship with the Lord. Not only vertically but horizontally. Hug at least two or three people y'all and tell them I'm glad to be in the service with you today. You got somebody on your right, somebody on your left. Don't leave yet. Don't forget that we are also a sacrificing church and we give to the Lord out of appreciation, out of examination, out of expectation. We give to the Lord because he's already been good to us. We give to the Lord because we know on some level he's testing us to see if we love him more than we love stuff. Do we trust him or do we trust our stuff? And then we give out of expectation because the New Testament says that my giving is like a seed sown in the ground. And when I sow it, it's going to come up again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we're getting ready to go. Y'all pray for me. Uh, I am preaching tomorrow at 12, Tuesday at 12, Wednesday at 12 in Dallas for their citywide revival. And uh, it's... Um, let me tell you this real quick. Gardner Taylor says preachers preaching to preachers is almost like a pitcher in the major leagues. They have the worst batting averages probably of everybody on the team. And the amazing thing is they walk more than everybody else on the team. Do you know why? They got the worst batting average on the team, but when he's high behind the plate getting ready to bat, the pitcher that's pitching wants to show off to the pitcher that's batting. And most of the time he throw balls trying to throw strikes, trying to show off. So it's rough preaching to preachers. So y'all pray for me here that I don't get up there and get cussing and stuff and get frustrated. Okay, I, I need you. I need you. Just pray for me tomorrow at 12, all right? And, and Tuesday at 12. Okay, all right. I will be back Wednesday night for prayer meeting and Bible study. Um, so y'all, y'all, uh, um, I'm looking to see y'all, all right? You need to get acquainted if you're going to get your assignment. All right, stand to your feet. Let's go. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I need, I, need, I need some people to call the office tomorrow so we can put your name on a list. And this is what I need. This, I need two groups of people, two types of people to call the church tomorrow and put your name on the list. All right? Tell Miss Eve, put your name on the list. These are the two type of people I need. I need van drivers with CDLs we need you at this church alright number two if you are an accountant okay or if you count money on your job I need you to call the church tomorrow 
and tell Miss Eve to put your name on the list. Okay? Van drivers, if you have your CDL. If we get enough of y'all, you wouldn't have to drive every Sunday. All right? And I need some accountants. I need some people who can just count money. All right? Because I need, I want you to be a part of worship too. And uh, I don't want you to stay back there all day counting money that you can't come in here and worship. And the reason I'm asking, because the more people we get, all right, the more, the more you'll have a chance to worship. Y'all got me? 318-227-9993. Tell Ms. Eve, put you on the list. We still gonna do background checks and everything. You heard me? All right? Okay. Uh, but, but, but I said I was just going to let y'all know and let y'all uh, call in, okay? Now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and remain with us henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all respond. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all.